Hello people of the internet, welcome back. In this video I'm talking about something a little bit different. Um, it is life advice for autistic people. Um, I don't think I've mentioned it on my channel before, but um, I was diagnosed with what was in ye olde days called Asperger's Syndrome uh, when I was 10. Um, they've now changed the kind of diagnostic criteria or something so um, if I were to be diagnosed now I would be diagnosed with autistic spectrum disorder um, Asperger's syndrome and like classical autism have kind of been merged into autistic spectrum disorder so that's what I'm going to be using for uh, this video because it's the more modern term and you know I'm a modern lady <laughs> So that's what I'm going to be saying. Um, yeah, so here's my life advice. Um, my point number one is don't make life harder for yourself um, because that's what you think you're supposed to do. Um, you are allowed to do things in an unconventional way if it makes things easier for you. For example, I have... And I cannot function without like a schedule. Everything I do needs to be written down. I have an app on my phone called Timo and it's T-I-I-M-O. So <laughs> that and that allows you to put like exactly your schedule in it and it links to your Google Calendar so you can put like brush your teeth on that. I literally put like brush your teeth, brush, I, I have to set like a time in my day to do that um, or otherwise I just can't function. For years I was working on like a principle of I shouldn't have to do that so I'm just not going to because I think I shouldn't have to um, and then just setting myself up for failure. Um, but if you do, if you have to do that, that's what you have to do. Just do it. Um, you know, things are going to be harder for you, so don't make it. Just do what you have to do. If you have to write, brush your teeth on a calendar, just do that. If you can't eat off like a china plate, get a plastic plate. Like no one cares, especially if you're an adult. Um, if you're an adult, you can do what you want. It's really nobody else's business if you have to use a plastic knife and fork because you prefer it. Like, who who does that affect? If anyone cares, that's their problem. Um, you can do what you like. Um, point number two uh, is one that I have kind of noticed since going deaf. And that is... Um, it is very convenient to be able to just switch the sound off. So um, I have a hearing aid and cochlear implant and if I take them off I am totally totally deaf. Like, Unless there's an explosion I won't hear it. Um, I mean as horrible as the sound of it is when it's on, taking up like the ability to switch off is great. Um, obviously Earplugs would be uh, a better solution to this issue than going deaf. Um, but I kind of never, I never really thought to do that um, until I went deaf. But now I can turn the sound off. You know, it's great. Um, yeah, so get yourself some earplugs if you are, if you are not already deaf. Um, yeah, um, you don't have to get like, like the horrible foam ones um because those are horrible you can get like ones that are they're called musicians earplugs and they just quieten the sound and they don't block out all of the sound um or you can get ones that are like custom molded to your ears kind of like my hearing aid mold like it just blocks all the sound and that would make it more comfortable because it's designed for your ear but look, in, look into the options um, there's one that I saw online they're called Loop um, they look really good obviously I can't really try them because 
I, you know, I can't really give a review. Um, but yeah, they look really good. Um, maybe look up those. Um, point number three is you can manage your sensory needs without looking like you have something wrong with you. Um, this was something that I've always been super paranoid about. Um, you know, I am really bothered by sound, light, fabric, textures, um, you know, so many things bother me. But I never wanted to kind of do anything about it because I didn't want to look like I had something wrong with me. Um, I didn't want to feel weird. Um, but you don't have to, like, and you probably don't look as weird as you think you do. Um, you can go, like, if you go, if you're in the supermarket and you need to wear sunglasses in the supermarket, um, I don't like the lighting in supermarkets. Um, no, like, no one will care or notice. Um, if anything, they'll just assume that you forgot to take your sunglasses off when you get inside, because that's a thing that a lot of people do anyway. Um, yeah, it's like really not a problem. If you wear the same clothes every day, uh, obviously like clean, um, probably people won't notice. I have a kind of uniform of clothes that I wear. Um, obviously, if you know me, I just wear either stripy tops or jumpers and jeans and all of my jeans are the same pair of like Marks and Spencer's jeans that I have in all the colours. They're the Sophia straight style and that's kind of all I wear and then just trainers and yeah. Um, before the stripy tops it was um, like collared shirts with like buttons down the front with like a check pattern on. I had like several of those that I wore every single day for years and um, until everyone started like commenting that no one else was, could ever wear that because that's all <laughs> I, I always wore that so it would just look like they were copying me. Um, obviously no one was mean about it but you know at the end of the day it doesn't really matter. Um, but yeah you can manage what you need to do without looking like you've got something wrong with you. Um, you can get earplugs that aren't super obvious like you don't have to wear like ear defenders I mean I mean unless you're I don't know, using a chainsaw or something um, but in which case like everyone needs to use ear defenders um, uh, I mean I'm deaf so I probably wouldn't even hear it but um, yeah everyone needs to use ear defenders for using power tools normal life you can probably just wear earplugs and you can get either earplugs are like virtually invisible or you can get ones which kind of look nice. Like the loop ones that I mentioned, they, they're just, they look like a little kind of loop in your ear. I'll put a picture of them um, on the screen and I'll put a link to them in the description. They look quite nice, they're quite tasteful. Um, they're not like an ugly bit of foam or something. Um, point number four is adults are allowed to have kiddie things if they want and you like what you like so yeah it's, it doesn't mean that you're immature or you're not very sensible um yeah i have a massive thing for cuddly toys like little fidget toys uh i have a thing for cleaning products um not cleaning in itself i mean obviously i clean stuff like I don't like living in filth but I have a thing for like cleaning products so I like to go into Sainsbury's and just look at the cleaning aisle for like an hour that's something that makes me bizarrely happy but I have this thing which I got recently he is called Keith and he is a squish mallow and it is honestly the softest squishiest nicest thing um, ever. And yes, it is for ages zero plus, but I'm zero plus, so I can have it. And, um, I've also got these. I have loads and loads of these. They're, um, 
the Jelly Cat Corduroy toys. I've had them for years. Um, I don't, I'm not sure if they still make them, but they're so, they've got this nice like cord feeling thing. I just, I love them. Uh, and I also have like all of these fidget toy things. I love um, like these fidget spinners. Um, wow, it looks like it's moving really slowly on camera, but it's actually going really fast. Yeah, weird. Um, but I love those. I don't know why they've gone out of fashion. Um, but yeah, even though they're kind of kiddie things, um, you're allowed to do it if you're an adult. Um, I love the hoobs as well. Does anyone remember the hoobs? I love that TV program. I used to wake up at 5 a.m. before school every day um, when I was in year seven and watch, so that would be when I was about 11 or 12 and the hoobs was on channel four, I think, at 5 a.m. and I would watch the hoobs and that was a thing I did every single day. <laughs> and, I mean, if, if you like it, you like it. Um, yeah, and it doesn't mean that you're immature or it doesn't impact your, it doesn't mean you're not intelligent. You just, you like it. I have um, apparently above average intelligence according to my diagnosis report thing. But I think that was just like one area of my like IQ test was really high and the rest were like normal. <laughs> Um, the one thing that was really high was like pattern recognition. Um, you, it was like I had to like pick out which pattern went in the gap and they do it kind of the age appropriate one um, and I did all of those and got them all right and then they did the one for like older children and then they did the one for like adults and I did all of them and got them all right. Um, so that kind of boosted, <laughs> that kind of boosted everything up. Uh, I have yet to find a practical application for that ability, but yes, I am very good at pattern recognition. Um, a bit of trivia there. Um, so yeah, I have supposedly got an above average intelligence and I like kiddie stuff and anyone is allowed to like kiddie stuff um yeah or whatever whatever you like cleaning stuff um pens um dinosaurs dinosaurs are a pretty normal thing to like loads of people like dinosaurs um yeah i mean i'm just you're allowed to like whatever you like um as long as it's not hurting anyone it's fine and my point number five my final point is uh the Social anxiety can be really hard to deal with, but I think I found my method. Because obviously I am deaf and um, very socially awkward, um, according, well, according to everyone. <laughs> I'm, I'm a bit socially awkward and I'm deaf, which is not great for socialising because I cannot read people very well at all. I mean, I have like a limited ability to recognize like facial expressions but it's not very good so for example like i can see if someone's smiling and i can recognize that they're smiling but sometimes people like smile when they're not like happy and i don't really like there's like a happy smile you can have like an amused smile you can have an awkward uncomfortable smile I can't tell the difference between those. I hope that makes sense. Um, or like if someone's bored or if someone's angry, like I can't really tell the precise differences. I get the general, but it's hard to tell the kind of precise differences. And I also can't hear anything. I mean, I can hear a tiny bit with my cochlear implant and I mean, I can't really hear anything with my hearing aid, but it's there. Um, so yeah, I can hear a little bit, but it's not great and I can't read people. So I most of the time have no idea what's going on. And I have an awful paranoia. I've also, I've always had it that, I'm not sure if anyone else has this. People tell me in the comments um, whether you've got an autism spectrum disorder or not. Um, yeah, 
tell me down in the comments whether you experience this. Basically, because I can't read people, I'm really worried that I'm just annoying everyone or like making a situation really awkward and no one actually wants me there, but they're all too polite to tell me that I'm being annoying. So I'm putting everyone in a really awkward situation. So I tend to kind of isolate myself and never instigate like social situations. For example, like I struggle to ask um, friends, like, do you want to meet up with me? I have one friend that I, um, that I actually would like ask to meet up with. And I always am worried that I'm annoying her. <laughs> I mean, we've been friends since we were like 11. Rebecca, if you're watching, it's you. <laughs> um, um, she's the one friend that I would actually like call her or text her and ask to meet up. And I'm always just paranoid that I'm annoying everyone and no one likes me. Um, so the way I've found to deal with that is just to be really honest. And what I say is, look, I know I'm really quite socially awkward. Um, and I don't want to put you in an uncomfortable situation. So if you, if I'm annoying you, or um, I do something really like inappropriate or awkward, can you please tell me um, and just be honest with me because I won't get it if you're trying to be subtle about it. So can you just tell me directly if I'm annoying you so I know? And then if they don't, then that's on them because they know that you want them to tell you if, you're being annoying so they should and if they don't then you know you've done everything you can do um and no one should hold that against you um yeah uh the final part of this video so that's all my tips um but there was um I looked through I had to fill out like a disability evidence thing um for my pit payments a while ago and I read through I, I ended up reading through the like um, Asperger's syndrome diagnosis thing that I had from when I was 10 and there's a bit in it which is like sums me up in two sentences which I find completely hilarious it's like the most accurate two sentences it's like wow they know what they're talking about nothing's changed has it it says Mrs Findlay commented that Nell does not lack a sense of humour in fact she can find herself quite funny she has built up a set of rules for social interaction for herself by a process of trial and error. But outside these rules, she is at a loss. <laughs> like, <laughs> I just find that so funny. It's like, well, nothing's changed. Uh, at least I'm true to myself. Um, yes. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video and that maybe it's helped people. Um, Thank you very much for watching. Bye!